Hello. So in this video, we are going to be talking about logarithmic functions, and in particular, sort of through the lens of explicitly being an inverse function. So as a general sort of statement, exponential functions can be pretty difficult to compute or sort of unravel. So there are situations where it's sort of nice. For example, if you have something like 2 to the x equals 8. This isn't that difficult, right? Like that thing, we could figure out and be like, all right, 8 is 2 to the 3 and set the things, and we're like, ah, x is 3. But it turns out that exponential functions sort of grow really, really, really fast. So even if it's sort of a nice number, if that number is large, it can get pretty difficult to find it, right? So like 2 to the x equals 131,072. Like that is a very sort of annoying thing to try to answer. But it turns out it doesn't even have to be hard because it's large. It can be hard because it's sort of just not nice. So for example, if we look at 2 to the x equals 7, right? 2 to the x equals 8, great. 2 to the x equals 7, not great, <laughs> right? Like that's suddenly like really terrible to try to get your sort of brain around and, and get an answer to. So enter the logarithm. So the logarithm was literally invented for this reason, to try to undo these exponential situations and try to get some representative that tells you what that number should be. So a logarithm with base b, so this is typically written as log base b, this is the inverse of applying an exponent to b, which we sort of introduced when we introduced, you know, the actual definition of a logarithm. But the main use of logarithms, really in math, um, mostly with an asterisk, the main use at this level, let's say, is to undo an exponential, right? Trying to get just the exponent itself left behind. So for example, if we have something like 2 to the x equals 7, I want to try to isolate x. I want to isolate x as a number. Well, I can sort of undo that 2 as a base by using log whose base is that base, meaning that here I have 2 to the x, so I would use log base 2. So I take log base 2 of both sides. On the left, that log base 2 and the 2 part sort of undo each other. And the result is just what the exponent was on that 2, right? And in this case, it's just x. On the right, it just sort of is what it is. Log base 2 of 7, there's sort of not a nice way to represent that. Okay? So sort of similarly, this sort of thing can go in both directions. It's much less common to run into like a log base 3 of x situation. Like usually we're undoing exponents and that's why we sort of generate the log. But sometimes we have stuff in a log. We want to get rid of it. The way we do that is we use the same base for the logs. This is log base 3, right? So I have log base 3. So I'm using 3 as a base on both sides. So we say that's exponentiating or we exponentiate with base 3 on both sides. So on the left, the 3 and the log base 3 are going to undo each other, leaving just the argument, the inside part of the log, which is just x. On the right, that's just a number, right? This is 3 to the fourth. So 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. So I can just compute that and you know run it down. But that gives me my answer. x is 81, right? So I can use that exponentiation part, like using that base, to undo the log. All right, so what we do? Well, we sort of went through logarithms sort of explicitly as inverse functions, this idea that like logs were really sort of invented in order to tackle the issue of uh, having exponents where they aren't sort of equal to a nice thing. So there's no sort of way of canceling out that base situation, right? Like two to the x equals eight, we could get that as 2 to the x equals 2 to the third, and then we could sort of cancel out those 2s in the bottom and get x equals 3, and we have a nice day. But 2 to the x equals 7, there's no way to write 7 as a nice power of 2, and so this is where the logs come in as, say, log base 2, okay? And then we sort of went through that you can also go the other direction. It's less common, but it happens. So to do that, we would exponentiate on both sides. We would say, okay, if we have log base 3 of some stuff and we want to get rid of that log base 3, we use 3 as a base on both sides so that the 3 and the log base 3 cancel, and then whatever's on the other side is sort of whatever it is. Hopefully we can compute it, but we sort of just have to deal with it as it is. Okay? So that is that.